We're with Coach Heupel here, year five. Coach, you excited? Year four. Um, man, it's uh, it's great to be out here. Uh, obviously, we were limited yeah. in, in our capacity today. Uh, but for the guys to get an opportunity to play in front of our fans, our family, um, big day here on Rocky Top. Got an opportunity to see a bunch of young guys grow up today, too. I'm jumping the gun on year five already. Sorry about that, Coach. <laughs> hey, we got we got Nico. We're going to see a little bit of Nico. Fans are pumped about him. What have you seen so far with the progression of him here in the spring? Yeah, uh, obviously the opportunity to start the bowl game. Great experience for him. Uh, played really well. Opportunity to grow, too, and, and learn uh, some areas that he's got to continue to improve upon. Uh, love what he's done all off season. Been phenomenal all spring. Opportunity today, continued growth uh, to become the player we need him to be. So we all know about the receivers you've had. You had Tillman, you had Hyatt, speedsters on the outside, big guys. Last year, injuries killed that position, but now you've got some guys coming in, the transfer, Brazel. How pumped are you for that group? Yeah, there's a few more that are playing on Sundays, too, that you didn't mention. Uh, <laughs> re re really ex excited about uh, the depth in the group at the wide receiver position. Uh, the deepest that we've been since we've been here. Opportunity to play more guys during the course of the game and during the course of the season. Just a couple on defense too. Defensive line stack. 13 guys may rotate up front. The strength of the defense you'd say? Um, hopefully the strength of our football team to be honest. Um, but uh, we're a long ways away from kickoff. I, I love the experience but all spring long they've come out with a purpose. Uh, they've set the tone, created the energy on the practice field. They've grown fundamentally. It's a group that's really tied inside of their meeting room, too. Um, proud of what they've done. Excited to see them compete today. Last thing, what do you want to see today? I want to see guys play extremely hard, uh, both sides of the football. Um, you know, defensively, let's go create some turnovers. Got to continue to grow in that area. Offensively, take care of it. And uh, want to see our guys play smart football uh, and the young guys take another step uh, where we need them to be next fall. Have fun. Uh, it's going to be a great day. Go be yours. There he is, Coach Eiffel. Back to you, Mike. Dustin, thank you. So we're about to get underway here. Temperature almost 70 degrees, not a cloud in the sky, a huge weekend. Everywhere you look for Tennessee sports, number four baseball team with a big win over LSU last night. Karen Weekly softball team ranked number four in the country. And the Vols wrapping up their spring football with this game here today. So we'll start with a kickoff as Dylan Sampson will be back to receive on the kickoff from J.T. Carver, who's very much in the mix in their kicking competition, along with Max Gilbert and Josh Turbyville. As they look to replace a grad transfer from last year, Charles Campbell, who was their place kicker. Turbyville handled the kickoffs last year. So this is just to get things underway. Ball off the tee and then Sampson back deep and then they'll start with their first possession at the 25 yard line. Last year Josh Turbyville handling the kickoffs fourth in the SEC with a 72 percent touchback rate and that one all the way to the goal line. And so our format for today white team the offense orange team the defense and they'll trade possessions points not live 15 minute quarters in our first half and then a running clock in the third and fourth quarters big goal get everybody out of here happy healthy and with a little bit more experience under the belt and quarterbacks in the gray jerseys today with no contact on those guys of course Dustin after we sat down and talked with Josh Heupel yesterday with Tim Banks the defensive coordinator what are the things you're most eager to see this afternoon. So Iamaleava under pressure and throws it away on the opening possession of the game under pressure there from Jeremiah T. Lander breaking through on the offensive line led Tennessee freshman last year with 35 tackles in the 2023 season certainly getting more experience and we'll see plenty of him today a reminder Keenan Peely the seventh year linebacker who was hurt against Virginia in the opener last year not playing today as a precautionary measure and the handoff here on second down goes to Deshaun Bishop the redshirt freshman from right here in Knoxville and the tackle by Caleb Perry. Well you see Bishop right there that's another guy who's going to get some opportunities here Mike because of some of the injuries to Lewis and Selden there in the backfield and you know Bishop's got a lot of potential didn't play last year took the redshirt year was a little bit banged up and now here in this spring game an opportunity. Iamaleava with a third down and six. You can see look at him diagnosing the defense having a chance to to make the line make the 
And he gets just a four man rush to throw to the outside just past the original line of scrimmage and taken in by Chaz Nimrod on the edge. Now interesting too in this game is that this year you can have the helmet communication in college football the addition of the two minute warning as well. But at the speed at which the volunteers play they're still going to be using sidelines in from the or signals in from the sidelines because they feel that's the fastest and most effective way to communicate what they're doing. I also think it's important too when you know you're dealing with a freshman quarterback you don't want to put too much on his plate and also you want everybody on the same page right so everybody uh, takes a look over to the sideline they signal in the call and then sort of at the last second coach Heupel can get in the ear of, of Nico and maybe tell him to look a certain way or take take a peek at where the Mike linebacker is or there's some movement or maybe you've got some pre snap motions that you want to keep an eye on to try and tell if the defense is in a man or zone coverage. I was Jackson Ross who's going to be a second year starter come this fall with a 48 yard punt to the freshman Boo Carter coming out of Chattanooga and they love him in the ESPN 300 listed simply as an athlete it seems like they could have put him on either side of the ball but right now he's listed behind Jordan Thomas at their nickel position coming into the spring game. So the second unit going to be led by Gaston Moore at quarterback he's got Khalifa Keith in the backfield with him Moore, the redshirt senior 10 of 17 through the year in his career and Josh Heupel really pleased with the progress he's made in this spring feels the pressure gets it to the outside. And it's Dayton Sneed who makes the catch and gets across the 35 yard line. Again the tempo is going to go fast here Mike. Even with your second team quarterback you want to run the same offense the same tempo. And again, you see everybody looking off to the sidelines calling the plays. Remember Coach Heupel not calling the plays in, during the spring game. Moore fakes the handoff fastball to the 39 yard line and the first touch for Chris Brazel the second hoping to be yet another impact transfer wide receiver here as he's taken down by Jalen McMurray that's two transfers one at wide receiver and McMurray the transfer at cornerback coming in from Temple yeah, and I like that tackle by McMurray you know play cornerback in this conference you've got to be physical on the outside that was excellent Moore with a clean pocket and it's a little bit too tall on the outside that'll bring up third down and six. First look to the edge there for Mike Matthews the top recruit in the class of 2024 coming here to Knoxville. Defense shows blitz off the edge flag it's a free play deep ball single coverage deep downfield and a little bit too much on it. But it looked like there was a jump from the defense on that blitz from the slot. Pass intended for Matthews going downfield. Offside on the defense, number 94. Five yard penalty. Replay third down. So more here at quarterback on this second team fourth year transfer from UCF a walk on has played in seven games in his career but no doubt instrumental in the transition to the starting role for Nico Iamaleava. Blitz comes again after the penalty and on the handoff it is just enough for first down yardage there for the sophomore running back Khalifa Keith Edwin Spillman the freshman comes up to meet him. And I got to tell you Mike I'm right behind the play and I heard that it chilled I sent chills into my bones pressure coming check down throw goes over the middle as they get toward midfield from Moore who felt that pressure coming Mike you, you mentioned Spillman the freshman they're really excited about him and, and again with some of the linebackers including Herring and Peely not playing in this game you're going to see a lot of Spillman one of the great lines that coach Banks told us yesterday was that he craves violence from the linebacker position another good throw there over the middle and a hard hit as well Staten Sneed the redshirt freshman pulls that ball in and gets hit by Boo Carter so the second team unit working well here and a handoff on first down is bottled up right at the line of scrimmage. 
Offense this year returns 46% of its production from a year ago. And the run game has been elite. They've run for more than 2,500 yards in three straight years for the first time ever. Last year, ninth in FBS at 205 yards per game on the ground. It's so funny, too, Mike. You know, a lot of people think that this Tennessee offense is just, you know, running, gun, and throw, 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 throw. But they've had great running backs. And again, you got two guys that are going into the NFL draft this year. Both will be selected. And now you hopefully have another one in Dylan Sampson, but you still have to have a couple more. We talked about that in the open, and they're really looking for somebody to step up. Good pocket, ball lofted deep near sideline, and incomplete, just a little bit too long. Looking for Chris Brazel in the end zone. But you're gonna see a lot of depth today. We're gonna see Dylan Sampson and Deshaun Bishop and Khalifa Keith and the walk on Hunter Barnes. Cam Seldon, surgery out would be number two on the depth chart right now. And Peyton Lewis, a freshman signee, hurt in his high school season, but they certainly expect him back for the start of preseason camp. All right, so big third and nine here. They went to Brazel on that second and long, took a shot. They got him single coverage here again. And they see an opening in the defense with the handoff. It's a run short of the first down as Spillman once again comes up to make the tackle on Khalifa Keith. And they like Spillman a lot. You've got two new coaches on the staff this year. William Inge, one of those, coming in to coach the linebackers. And says of Spillman, he's one of my favorite players to coach because I never have to speed him up. I only have to slow him down because of the way he wants to play and get to the ball. And he's, a, he's a fast dude. He's very young, as you talked about there. But to, ha but to have that knack for the football is pretty impressive. More to come from Rocky. Temperature around 70 degrees. Post game concert to come later on today. Big baseball game tonight as the Vols take on LSU and enthusiasm is high going into year four of the Josh Heupel era in Tennessee football. Coming off a nine and four season last year. We are just two drives in here to the spring game and a first look at the freshman from Savannah, Georgia, Jake Merklinger, who's taken over here at quarterback for this drive. And he gets out of the pocket for a nice scramble there. Justin, they're really excited about him. Enrolled, went through bowl practices, and chose the Vols over 27 other offers. The number eight pocket passer in his high school class. Yeah, and he's gotten better and better throughout this spring. Coach talked about the, the first scrimmage they had, how much he, he grew from that process, getting out there, some live action, and, and again, another chance here in the stadium. It's not, not full capacity today as they got some renovations going on, but a heck of a crowd that's allowed to be here on this beautiful day. And, and again, a great chance for him to compete for that backup role behind Nico. Offsides, and that blows the play dead. Yes, a diminished crowd here today for the stadium that usually seats about 102,000. Offside on the defense, number 51. Five-yard penalty the results in the first half. And so only 10,000 allowed in the building today because of the ongoing renovations. And you look at the stadium and you say, well, I don't see anything under construction. But it's a lot of things in the entryways and the concourses and increasing the amenities here inside of Neyland. And so that's the off-season construction going on here in the spring. First down and 10, Merck Linger. He sends Patrick Wilk out on the flat. A flag is thrown pre-snap. And the slant caught just shy of midfield. Which will bring up second down and nine, pending the penalty flag. Titus Rohr, the tight end with the grab. That's a violation against the offense. Illegal shift on the offense. Two players moving at the same time. Five-yard penalty results in first down. And as you alluded to earlier, Dustin, as well, it's always going to be about speed for this offense that's going to snap the ball once every 20 seconds or so, fastest pace in FBS. But the expectation here today is not about speed, but it's about making sure everybody's lined up in the right place and that the fundamentals of the offense are set correctly. Yeah, that's always spring ball. You're all about the fundamentals, as you talked about there, Mike, and you don't want to have mistakes. You don't want to have penalties. And remember, a lot of these things that you're running 
whether it be defensive schemes or offensive plays, a lot of it can tend to be vanilla because it's an install period here with a lot of young players. You've got transfers who are just coming in. You've got a lot of the incoming freshmen who freshman players who have enrolled early. And so you're not you're not putting the kitchen sink at these guys this this soon before fall camp. And by the way, you got a, you got a few more guys coming here for fall camp that they're looking to step up as well. Spillman with a great job off the edge there gets credit for the sack that backs up the offense to third down and 17 inside four minutes to go in the opening quarter. And this offense under Josh Heupel has been prolific in just three years. They broke in 19 team offensive records. That's another offside. So why not take a deep shot down the sideline? I almost caught it Mike. Long. I almost had it. I trust you. It was right in my hands. Now it's a great throw, great arm strength there, just, just a little outside. On the defense, number 98, five yard penalty, replay third down. Although, don't they always say there is a reason you ended up on defense, right? Oh, you're one of those guys. <laughs> I couldn't let the first quarter go by without at least a little jab. You've been doing the impromptu classes. You should be funnier than that. <laughs> That's why I'm still learning. Third down and 10. Against a four man rush. Great pocket here. Ball over the middle. Oh, and it's just off the hands. Right down the seam for Jackson Locke, the redshirt junior wide receiver. Boy, Ed Locke wide open. You said right down the seam. What a bang his head off the goalpost. That was a great throw. Just a couple of inches past the outstretched arms. So we'll get to see another punt here from Jackson Ross. Last year, Average 43 yards a kick. 22 of those punts landed inside the 20 yard line and see how well he can execute that here. First punt 48 yards. And this is one of your and that's to the transfers with McCoy. Yeah. 49 yards on that punt action continues 218 in the first here with the orange and white game. The ones are back on the field here 218 to go in the first in the orange and white game and there's Chris Brazel red shirt sophomore out of Midland Texas first year wide receiver transfer from Tulane as he comes back out on the field here with Nico Iamaleava and company and Iamaleava showing off his ability to get up there of course anytime that they close in on him the play is going to be blown dead but we saw him do that last year in their bowl game three touchdowns on the ground and Dustin, he's really excited about having the new weapon out there in Brazel on the outside. Yeah, Brazel's a, a really fun prospect here. You know, he, he could have stayed at Tulane. Willie Fritz and that offensive staff, they decided to go on to, to Houston. And so there were options for Brazel. He, he, he could have stayed there. He had a great role. He was a very productive receiver for the Green Wave, but decides to come here to UT. And I, I really think there's a great opportunity for him. And then when you look at it on the outside, he's six foot five, right? But he's a little bit different than Thornton, who also goes about six five, six six. And here he is, wide open on the outside. And you can see already Nico trying to get the football to number eleven. The thing that's interesting too about Brazel, you know, Brazel's a former high school basketball player, so he's got that ability to go up and make plays, especially in the red zone. I think that's going to give this this offense a big threat to get down there. And it, it yields another punt here with a minute to go in the quarter. So no Brook McCoy today as he works his way back from his injury. Squirrel White out today as well. The Brazel has looked good here in the early going. We've seen some deep balls thrown toward Mike Matthews. And the freshman Boo Carter is back to receive this punt. He's been in the mix in their return game and takes that at the 40 yard line. 42 yards on the punt. The interesting thing is about Carter Dustin you know you talk about managing expectations through spring ball how much you can learn and then into the fall when you talk about guys who are young especially trying to get into the rotation in 39 games with Josh Heupel as the head coach freshman defensive backs have only started two so yes great players but what you have built now in three full seasons plus of going into year four with another recruiting class is depth so you have great freshmen coming in but the expectation isn't always that they're going to be on the field right away no that's a great point I mean young players have time to come here and develop and even though they struggled last year and, and some guys transferred and and some guys going to the NFL 
you're almost always getting somebody drafted from the secondary, which is pretty impressive. And the reason why a kid like Boo Carter, who had 39 Division I offers, decided to come be a volunteer. Gaston Moore at the helm here on this drive. And he looks for a quick throw across the middle, has the completion to midfield, and a little bit of extra effort to pick up the first down. 11 yards on the play on the game to Charlie Browder, the tight end. And I was looking at Browder before the game down here as he's warming up. Six foot seven. He looks like he's 6'10. He's a he looks like he'd be playing center for the basketball team. Ball is tipped. And incomplete intended for Dante Thornton. They're really excited, Dustin, about this tight end group as well. With Miles Kitzelman coming in from Alabama, Holden stays coming in from Notre Dame as well. Yeah, and this is an offense with, with, with Coach Heupel that really wants to have two tight ends involved in their offense. They, they've had two tight ends darn near every season that Coach has been here at UT. And now you look at maybe Kitzelman and Stay. He's kind of taken over that role as the two big tight ends in this offense. Ball to the edge is incomplete as Jordan Matthews gets a hand in there and breaks it up on the ball intended for Dante Thornton. And that takes us to the end of the first quarter. Defense and special teams on display here in the early going on an idyllic afternoon in Knoxville, Tennessee. In between quarters, Trey Smith honored on the field who played here in Tennessee 2017 to 2020. Two time first team All SEC and now with the Kansas City Chiefs, a two time Super Bowl champion. Just jo Josh Dobbs here as well as we get ready to get the second quarter underway. Mike Cousins and Dustin Fox along with you on this gorgeous afternoon inside Neyland Stadium. Getting a look at Year four of the Josh Heupel era, and boy, have records fallen in fast fashion. 19 different team offensive records have fallen. The best scoring teams ever have been during his tenure. And in three years, Tennessee averaging 39 points a game in three seasons. Only Ohio State and Georgia have averaged more over the last three seasons in college football. So far today, though, no scoring as Gaston Moore is at quarterback here to start the second quarter and a toss over the middle. It's Charlie Browder with the catch and he's right to the first down marker at the 39 yard line. So more the red shirt senior. Zings that 35 yard line catch and another first down. So they're moving the ball quickly here. They get it out to the edge with Dayton Sneed making the catch from Moore, the fourth year transfer from UCF. Played in seven games in his career, and with having a younger quarterback taking over here, he's gotten the most reps of his career during this spring practice. Saw awesome. I'm back. And now a quick stoppage, Aiden Bustle, the redshirt freshman offensive lineman. A little bit slow, but back to his feet there, getting up after that throw. Mike, I'm back with you. I was talking uh, NASA with uh, Josh Dobbs. NASA? Well, we're talking about the Eclipse. Remember, he spent a little time in Cleveland. We're, we're going to get him here momentarily. We're going to talk, talk a little bit about the, the volunteers and the total Eclipse. How about that? Love it. Josh recently signed with San Francisco. Well, Dustin, we see Aiden Bustle here, who is the injured offensive lineman. Certainly down some depth here on the offensive line today, and I think that's going to be one of the questions going in is to see who's battling for starting jobs there, and most notably at not playing today, the center, Cooper Mays, simply a precautionary measure to make sure that he's healthy going into the summer and the fall. Yeah, I always think the center is the most important position on that offensive line, and, you know, Mays, who's a senior, was second-team All-SEC a season ago. you got to have him. You know, having a senior center with a freshman quarterback is, is absolutely the perfect combination because those two really need to be in sync. They're really excited about the left tackle they brought in. Lance Hurd, the transfer from LSU, who comes with three years of eligibility. And Josh Heupel could not have sung his praises any better, saying he's been a perfect addition not only on the field, on the left side of the offensive line, but as a locker room contributor as well. 
always find that fascinating too when you're a transfer and you come in here, especially when you're a veteran. How do you fit in, right? I mean, how do you, how do the guys respond to you in the locker? I think that's one of the most important things. And I always think it's good that guys get an opportunity to get in here early when you make that transfer. Play in spring ball, participate, as opposed to sometimes these guys transfer in, they're just going right into the season. So now an opportunity for the guys to really mesh prior to fall camp. Especially when you're going up against guys who a year ago you had to say, hey, I don't like those guys. We're trying to beat those guys and get to the SEC championship game. And now those are the guys you're going to war with. You change the ties real quickly. <laughs> so third and one as they get the ball into the red zone and the handoff to Wilk does get them the first down. Here's an interesting spot, Dustin, to watch how the defense fares here. That's one of the areas that Josh Heupel said they want to improve for 2024 is getting stops in the red zone and not settling for three, but getting six. Well, and I think that that's where you, you talk about those corners on the outside and, and can they match up with the big, tall wide receivers, especially on this drive. I and mean, we're, we're looking at Thornton here who's standing right in front of me as he goes about six foot six, six foot five. 214. That's the linebacker Jalen Smith heading off to the sideline for the Vols defense. Defense has continued to improve under Josh Heupel and Tim Banks going into year number four as the defensive coordinator last year 32nd in the country in yards allowed 21st in efficiency. During Heupel's tenure as well, because of how fast the offense plays, the defense has been out there for almost 2,900 snaps, the second most in FBS as the offense goes to work here in the red zone. And there's good blocking in front, and we have our first touchdown of the afternoon. Touchdown for Dayton Sneed, the red shirt freshman wide receiver. And he puts the first six on the board on a 13 yard catch and scramble into the end zone. It's a heck of, heck of a job by Sneed on the outside. You'll see the freshman defensive back for Root come in there 26. Just kind of whiffs on the tackle and a great job by Sneed finding the end zone. Need in competition with Chaz Nimrod and Caleb Webb and Mike Matthews. All behind Brew McCoy, Squirrel White, Dante Thornton, and Chris Brazel. So here comes the extra point. Max Gilbert, the redshirt freshman from Memphis. And he puts that up and through. Gilbert arrived on campus December of 2022, got to participate as Nico Iamaleava did in their Orange Bowl practices, and then started taking classes January of 2023. Last year, their kicker, Charles Campbell, was a grad transfer from Indiana, Chase McGrath a couple years before that. And we heard from Josh Heupel when we started the afternoon, Dustin, that this is as deep as he feels like they've been in four years. They're going to be healthy with McCoy. They've gotten better with Brazel. And that allows them to be able to be deep because you've got to how fast they play to get guys in, out, and ready to go. I think McCoy is the key. You know, when you get him back, it was a devastating injury for him, for him a season ago. And that sort of moved things around. You know, last year Thornton was playing inside. He's more of an outside wide receiver. We've got to get all these guys healthy. We know Squirrel White is going to be in, in, in the slot. And then you got Brazel probably playing the other side. I, I just think they've got plethora of weapons here for Nico to to really evolve this offense and take the step forward similar to the way that they you know they were in 2022 a record setting season and one guy we're not seeing today as well who's a really exciting addition is Braylon Staley the incoming freshman number 21 wide receiver in the high school class And that's going to make the coaching tape there. Even though no return, you want to be as good as you can on special teams as Deshaun Bishop comes off the field after the kick from JT Carver. And you mentioned the, the wide receivers that 2022 season. Jalen Hyatt, the program's first Boletnikoff Award winner, first unanimous All-American since Eric Berry in 2009. And Coach Hyper was very quick to remind me that uh, it's not just Hyatt, 
and Tillman going to the NFL. There's a lot of wide receivers that have come through this program under Heupel, and and he's put a lot of dudes in in the league everywhere he's been. Jake Merklinger leading the offense here. The freshman, 6'3", 205, out of Savannah, Georgia. Enrolled in January. He's got Hunter Barnes to walk on with him in the backfield. Good pocket, ball to the outside. And a nine-yard pickup with the throw to the edge. Catch there by Jack Henry Jacobic. Now to the opposite side. And this is an interesting two, point two, uh, Dustin, as Trey Weary gets the grab, is when guys transfer in here, especially heard it from the tight ends, but you hear from the wide receivers, one of the differences for this offense is how wide their splits are for the receivers. I was just noticing that. I mean, they're, they're splitting out well beyond the numbers as there's a deep shot down the field and a little bit too much contact. Oh, I think you let that one go. I'm a former defensive back, by the way. Pass interference on the defense, number 15. That 15 yard penalty will be enforced from the previous spot, and it carries an automatic first down. But I do want to get some of your knowledge on this, Dustin, about those wide splits and how it pertains to making things more difficult for the defense. What does that do relative to an offense that plays a little bit more compact? Well, the number one thing it does is you, you get defenders split out from the core. And, and whether those guys are going to be involved in the play or not, it still is something you have to pay attention to. And so you get guys out there well beyond the numbers. You can see both sides. But when they run those stack formations, that's what's really interesting. And, and you throw those quick sort of now screens, almost like design runs. It's Merklinger, nice, nice wheels there, getting outside the pocket there. Yeah, he gets inside the 30, so a gain of about 15 yards there for Merklinger on the run. But really, Mike, back to your point about those splits. I mean, some of it's just window dressing. I mean, you want to you want to get a corner of safety away from the core, and a lot of times you get them just running the football. Berklinger, low snap, handoff goes to Hunter Barnes, the redshirt sophomore walk-on out of Memphis, and Merklinger continues a string of high-rated recruits coming in here at quarterback as well. Their fourth ESPN 300 quarterback to sign with Tennessee, going back to 2016. And of course, you've got Nico Iamaleava taking over the reins, who was ranked 23rd overall in the 2023 high school class and the number five quarterback in that group. Once again, at five minutes to the half as Merklinger waits in the pocket. It steps up to run again. He's got some space to the 10, and he is in for the touchdown. A 26 yard scramble. You know, that's one of the things they really like about Merklinger is his ability to run. He's a quarterback. He talked about how highly rated he was out of high school. But this is a guy who ran for 32 touchdowns as well. So not just a pocket passer, very mobile quarterback. And, you know, obviously in this game, you get, you get touched, you're down. He was untouched right up the middle. Sees that thing part and finds his way to the end for their white squad. Hard to tell which team's going in which direction, but that's the white team put six on the board. And now Josh Turbyville, the redshirt sophomore, Knoxville native, for the extra point to try and even things up. Last year, their kickoff man, and in a three-man race along with Carver and Gilbert, to be the place kicking specialist for this year's team. Mark Linger taking the opportunity with an open field to run to the checkerboards and evens it up at seven. Lots of big names in the house here this afternoon at Nealon, Jawan Jennings and Josh Dobbs, now teammates after Dobbs spent last year with the Vikings and last month signed to play with the 49ers this past year as those two honored here late second quarter. Jennings, a Tennessee native, drafted seventh round in 2020, and Dobbs, who played here for the Vols 2013 to 2016, a fourth round pick back in 2017. And let's go down to Dustin with Josh Dobbs. Hey, Mike, I'm down here on the sidelines with uh, 
a volunteer legend, Josh Dobbs. How are you doing, buddy? I'm good, man. It's always good to be back on Rocky Top. How about this weather today, man? Gorgeous, gorgeous. We were playing some golf yesterday on the links, and it was, it was tough out here in Knoxville, but it opened up a great day here on Saturday for some football. Big golfer? Big golfer, big golfer. We got a, we had a, we had a good competition between all the VFLs out there at Tennessee Nationals. It was a good day. Who's the best? My team may have won, but you can't win your own tournament, so uh, I, I, won't, I won't say. I won't say. All right, so I do have to ask you, you played for the Browns, and you were in Cleveland last week. I'm a Cleveland guy, too, by the way, and you love space. We all know about that, that your history with NASA and, your, and all that stuff. So what was the, the eclipse like? You were in Cleveland. You saw it. It was absolutely amazing like to see totality, um, to see it downtown Cleveland on the Great Lakes at the Great Lakes Science Center with NASA and the STEM and the kids there, man. It was a, a beautiful event to take in. It's really once in a lifetime to take it in in that, in that setting and that experience. Um, so it was a great time and it was great to be back in Cleveland with some good weather. I'm sure you're considering getting into space or doing something after football, but you're still playing. Uh, you've been in the league for a while now. You've been on a million teams. I asked you, you know, we were off the air. Is this your eighth team? I think so. You know, at this point, it's like, might as well get all the helmets. You know, it'll be a crazy collection. But no, I'm just grateful for the next opportunity to be out in San Fran. I got Juwan Jennings out there. I got some familiar faces on a really on a really good team that's played a lot of really good football with, uh, with a tremendous coaching staff in front office. So I'm excited for my next opportunity, man. And uh, we'll see where the world takes us. You know how it goes. You take it one day at a time, put your best foot forward, maximize all the opportunities that are thrown your way. And you do that, man. Uh, when you look up, you'll be very proud of your journey. I have to ask you, last year, one, one of the great stories in the NFL was you. Uh, you're traded to, to Arizona, and then you end up in Minnesota like the next week, it seemed like. It was crazy. And then you come in the game against the Vikings and lead a remarkable comeback. How cool was that? It was so cool, man. Like, it was a whirlwind of a couple weeks just like getting traded and not thinking you're going to get traded and trade deadline happening. Oh, we got a big play going on. Okay. What do you think about that play? Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Crazy seeing Big O with the tackle all the way down the field. That was a great hustle by Big O, man. Awesome, Amari he does a great job on and off the field, uh, representing. The we'll YouTube. turn around here. But yeah, it was a it was a crazy story, man. Crazy journey um, throughout the year. Uh, but I'm thankful for it. It makes me who I am. Well, how about that throw? How about tell me about that throw from Nick? There we go. We've been, we've been waiting to see something right there. That was a great throw, great drive. Good to see, good to see Nico lead the ball, snap for a touchdown. I'll be excited to see that all fall this year. There have been so many great quarterbacks to play for the Volunteers and, and fans here in Volunteer Nation are pumped about about Nico. What have you seen from him so far? Yeah, I think one is just maturity that I felt um, in the times I've been able to spend some time around the guys. I was able to throw with them a couple months ago, and just the way he was, it was really Friday night on a, on a college campus in the middle of the winter, and he had the entire receiver core in the complex throwing with me to get some work in. And I think that shows the maturity that he has, the maturity that this team has, and that's the leadership that, that they'll need to go in throughout the season, throughout a really good and tough uh, conference in the SEC. So you just signed with San Francisco recently. Uh, how's that process been? What, what, what are your expectations for the upcoming season? I'm looking forward to it, man. Um, I've been able, I've watched them for afar. I played them last year when I was in Arizona. Uh, so they have a tremendous team. So I'm excited, man, to, to uh, embrace my role in that QB room and, and help us hopefully uh, take the step, which they've gotten so close to over the past four years and, and getting that Super Bowl. Josh, we appreciate your time so much, man. Best of luck. No doubt. Thank you all and go Vols always. All right, there is Josh Dobbs. More to come from Rocky Top when we come back. Yeah, Dustin, a great drive. Finished off 27-yard strike. Nico Iamaleava to Chaz Nimrod. And Nico perfect through the air this afternoon. The white team takes a 14-7 advantage here in the orange and white game in Knoxville. 36 seconds to go in the first half and a beautiful strike. Nico Iamaleava to finding Chaz Nimrod, the redshirt sophomore, down the sideline in the end zone. And Dustin, Nico a perfect 6 for 6, 91 yards in that touchdown. And he made Josh Dobbs proud. He was excited down here on the sidelines watching the new, the new shiny toy. Get his opportunity here in Neyland Stadium. What a, what a great throw in that touchdown pass. And just down the field, you said six for six. I think Coach Heupel will take that efficiency. Quarterbacks have been solid. Nico, six for six, 91 yards. Gaston Moore, eight of 12, 81 yards and a touchdown. And the freshman, Jake Merklinger, three of four, 20 yards. And the rushing touchdown, taking the space up the middle. This drive, 36 seconds. It's Moore at quarterback as they start out at the 25. Moore 
out of the pocket on the run. 26 seconds first half. We still got more coming your way at the half as well. Two new position coaches joining the squad this year. William Inge to coach the linebackers joined in late February. Last year, the co-defensive coordinator and linebackers coach for Washington, which went to the college football playoff championship game. And Darrell Sims, who joined the staff on February 20th, coaching the running backs. And you'll learn more about those new additions to the staff coming up at the half. First down ball. Caleb Webb to grab on the edge. 17 seconds in the first. Offense calling timeout. Timeout, offense. And Dustin, to go back to Nico Iamaleava as well, who may, after that last drive, be done for the day. They get him his reps and keep him healthy onto the sideline. It's been interesting hearing about his journey, going from a guy who was an early enrollee before the 2022 Orange Bowl win over Clemson to last year getting to watch and wait and then take over in the bowl game that they wouldn't necessarily describe him as an introvert, but a guy who has not yet been the one who's going to be the vocal guy because he hasn't had that playing experience, like you said, within the SEC. But he's formed his relationships in one-on-one -on -one conversations and welcomed guys into the fold, especially with a lot of new faces on offense. Yeah, and I go back to when I was a freshman. It's, it's really difficult to come into a team and expect people to, you know, sort of rally around you or listen to you. Obviously, I wasn't playing quarterback. And he is. But now that it's his job, as what a throw that is. Moore lets it fly, and the timeout pays off because Mike Matthews, the number five wide receiver in the ESPN 300, takes it, runs 63 yards, and a touchdown with some time to spare. Wow, Rocky Top salivating now as they see the young receiver making some plays. What speed on the outside by Mike Matthews and when we had a chance to, to chat with Coach Heupel this week he was raving about Mike Matthews and this is a guy that really prob probably could play defense or offense was a great safety in high school great size 6'1 186 and I really like what Coach Heupel told us yesterday is that it's a guy that really hasn't seen a lot of press coverage from the wide receiver position. <laughs> and that's, you know, you talk about the many ways in which making a jump to the SEC is difficult. Max Gilbert with the extra point is that anybody who's playing college football at the Power Five level, no matter where you're coming from, save for maybe playing at IMG Academy in Florida, you are far and away the best player on your team, in your league, maybe in your region, your state. And all of a sudden, you're playing against the best guys from everywhere that they came from. And I think the SEC probably plays the most man coverage of any conference in college football because they've got such great athletes on the outside. And, you know, when you're the best player in high school, you're going up against a corner who's probably lining up 10 yards off you playing zone coverage and you're wide open every every snap. That's different. And now to be out here in an environment in a big stadium like Neyland and you got man coverage and you make a play like that. And it was man, by the way, he beats his man with the speed release off the outside, creates that separation, a well-thrown football, and is making his mark here on, on this spring game. And that brings us to the half. So two big passing touchdowns at the end of the first. We're all even orange and white. After a slow offensive start, Nico Iamaleava perfect through the air, and Gaston Moore hits the freshman Mike Matthews to take us to the end of the first on Rocky Top. This is the first opportunity to meet the guys. Man, impressed with your moves. You join a team because you think you can make them better. That's exactly why Derail Sims and William Minge are here. All right, hey man. Hey, so you're gonna face this way. Face this way. Under. Bend. Knee bend. Knee bend. Under and over. Under. Under. There we go. No, you're good. You're good. You're good. Everything, everything we do, we will always start off the day with something excellent. For new coaches, it's important to earn the trust of your guys. Spring is the perfect time to build that relationship. 
Anything happen spectacular today for anybody? Hey, there we go. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. What you can expect from me as a coach, high energy, being detail oriented, and pushing my guys to their limit. You know, making sure that they understand that I love and I care about them. But I want them to be the best that they can be as a person. I want them to be the best that they can be as a football player. I can't come into the building and say, man, today I'm just gonna get through this. I, got, I get to come out here and execute number one. I get to come out here and compete with my brothers in this room, with my teammates on the field. So we gotta understand, before you can go achieve any goal, you gotta have that mentality to go do it. I think you look at the trajectory of the program now, um, and then the opportunity to come into what I feel like um, is RBU, and, and being able to put your imprint and your stamp on it and help this program achieve the levels that we all wanna get to. We gotta do a really good job, okay, of always making sure we're competing. Listening to the instructions, competing and getting active. The, the hardest part is one, just get, making sure the guys trust you because you know they're always looking at whenever a new guy comes in there, it's like, all right, what's this guy gonna be about? Is he gonna be real? Is he someone I can trust? Is he someone that can help me? Let's go, let's go, Hunter, let's go, take it. Take the field, let's go. Work my feet just like I'm going to attack the ball kick. You know what I'm saying? Good job, stop! Good job, stop! Good job, stop! His ability to communicate, his ability to teach, and his overall football knowledge was extremely clear right from the jump. Now we steer it. Good, steer it, steer it. We knew that was the guy we had to get in the building. When the ship gets a little wavy in the seas, the captain will always bring it in and calm everybody down. Is that clear? And that's what we have to be able to do. The biggest thing I would say is, is in our room, the levels of demand, the levels of accountability is also very high. High line of accountability when it comes to what you do every day from a workout standpoint. Our speed has to be going up on a day-to-day -day basis. Our leadership has to be going up. Our urgency has to be there. We have to become more urgent. He's super confident in what he believes in the right way to, to win and he preaches on us every day, and he's super big on getting us out of our comfort zone. It's your job to help someone because at some point in time, it could be one of us in the room. And what should your teammate do? Lift you up. The one thing that I know is this game is such a great gift. I do everything I can to make sure that the players somehow, some way, try to smile every day. Every day of practice, whether it's me making them smile somehow with a corny joke or just being able to say something just, just so they can see themselves smile and see each other smile because this game can be fun. It's supposed to be fun. And that, that's what this great sport is all about. Hey, hey man. Hey. Hey, man, it's a great Monday, mental Monday workout. You ready? Ready, sure? Why are you fumbling the balls, man? The pride and tradition of Tennessee football will not be entrusted to the weak, timid, or non-committed, right? Correct? So make sure we're not that. New faces are all around the building this year, but the standards remain the same. That all starts with family, connection, and football. The orange and white Tennessee spring game heading into year number four of the Josh Heupel era. Quiet first quarter, but things really got heated up in the second as Nico Iamaleava takes over the reins following the Citrus Bowl win last year against Iowa, where he scored four touchdowns, three of those on the ground, showing off his great decision making and his arm here in this first half. Dustin, we saw Iamaleava, Gaston Moore get out of the action. First touchdown was Dayton Sneed getting up and getting some good blocking up the sideline. Yeah, I thought Sneed did a really good job breaking the tackle, getting into the end zone, and the offense was very efficient on that drive. I was really impressed with really all the quarterbacks that we saw in that first half. Now, granted, they're not going to get touched. There's no pass rush that can get, you know, allow them to be sacked, but that throw by uh, by Nico the touchdown throw was just fantastic. We had the Jake Merklinger touchdown run as he took off up the middle and closed out the first half with some really explosive plays. Iamaleava to Nimrod and then Moore finished off the first half with a touchdown toss as well to Chaz Nimrod. And listen there's going to be opportunities for some of these these guys like Nimrod on the outside maybe even a little bit of Sneed. I'd see a little Caleb Webb. 
Mike Matthews, the young freshman, I thought he has been maybe the most impressive uh, wide receiver that I've seen so far today. The, the young freshman who's, I think, going to get a lot of playing time this season as a youngster. Iamaleava the perfect through the air. And more 10 of 14 for 151 yards. We're probably going to see a little bit more down the depth chart. Coaching staff said that Nico would probably go about 20 snaps here as we get ready to start the third quarter. So that means we'll see Navy Schuler, the redshirt freshman, and perhaps the walk on redshirt freshman, Ryan Dameron at quarterback. Chris Brazel with some impressive plays in the first half. The first year transfer wide receiver from Tulane. There you see Miles Kitzelman as well along the sideline. The transfer tight end from Alabama. And the kickoff from JT Carver gets us underway on the, or I should say the catch from Deshaun Bishop with none of those kickoffs being alive. And it looks like you are correct, my friend. We are going to see Schuler, I believe, on this offensive drive. He is in the huddle here with the offense. Navy Schuler, the redshirt freshman from Western North Carolina out of the town of Fletcher, his third year with Tennessee, spent two years at App State. His dad, Heath, former SEC Player of the Year in 1993, second in the Heisman Trophy voting to Charlie Ward. And he takes over here first and 10 at the 25-yard line with Hunter Barnes with him in the backfield. So empty set. And they call him down as he took off and started to run. That was Joshua Heldson in pursuit into the backfield for a loss of three, second down 13. Uh, the throw ball pops loose in and out of the hands of Trey Weary. And Dustin, to go back to that first down play there, first snap of the day for Schuler. Always have to remember what expectations and realizations are coming out of a game like this is this is a staff that believes this is the deepest the most talented defensive line in the country against an offensive line that's missing several starters today yeah I think anybody who was coming into this game thinking that the offensive line was going to have a great day probably fooling themselves this defensive line mostly healthy mostly playing in this game as you mentioned the offensive line maybe down four starters potentially in this game so a lot of the backups playing against some of the starters more so in the first half than what we'll see here in the second and third quarter as we get a little bit of a running clock and get an opportunity to see some of the, the younger players try to make their mark. And the most enthusiastic comment yesterday from Tim Banks, who's going into year four as the defensive coordinator here for the Vols, was about the defensive line that he says is the tip of the spear. Everything else flows through what they do. If they're able to get pressure, that makes everybody's life easier. And that's why they want that position group so deep to keep so many fresh bodies cycling through there and make life hectic for opposing offensive lines. Well, and I got to tell you, you know, when I when I played way back in the day, uh, our course at Ohio State, our defensive line was fantastic. It made my life in the secondary so much easier. And so when you talk about trying to, you know, make that pass coverage, the pass defense better, I think it really does start up front. And this defense is built from front to back, and that's that's really what you want. And when you can rotate 13 guys, you can keep guys fresh. You, it allows you to be able to play a little bit more man coverage on the outside, which I think puts pressure on the opposing team's offense. And then what it also does is it allows you to pressure a little bit more. And so quarterbacks have to get the football out a lot quicker. And then you talk about that man coverage on the outside. That helps tremendously. One of the guys, Rodney Garner, the defensive line coach, has said has really improved Jason Jenkins, who two years ago played just three snaps, got into six games last year at defensive end, bringing back Easton and Thomas across the middle. And then James Pierce Jr., first team all SEC last year, and the SEC's leading returning tackle for loss and sack leader coming back this year, Nimrod on the edge. How about Nico getting another series here in the second half? A perfect seven for seven through the air for Ia Maleava. Last year played five games in 2023. His most regular season action came at the end of the year as he loads up and goes deep down the sideline. And a little bit too much sizzle on the pass for Caleb Webb. But 2023 
played the most of the regular season, that 24-point win over Vanderbilt, and then, of course, took off in the 35-0 win in the bowl game over Iowa. But that Iowa game was interesting, too. You know, Very low scoring to start, and then all of a sudden, Tennessee just opens that thing wide open, and really a big part of it was was Nico's ability with his legs, those three touchdown runs, it got things going. And I think that's where, where, where Vols fans really got excited about the prospects of Nico for this season. You know, obviously it's tough to lose a quarterback like Joe Milton, but Nico steps in with all kinds of hype. And I think he's got a really, really good head on his shoulders to be able to handle this. And you talked about earlier, Mike, his, his leadership and how he's been able to, to come in here as a young player. And I think the, the veterans around him have, have responded. Because I think everybody knows, and that's always important, when your teammates know that you're the guy, that's when they buy in. And it also helps the coaching staff, too, when you've got a quarterback that, that can lead not only with his words and by being vocal, because he's not the most vocal guy in the world. He will be as he gets a little bit older, but by showing with actions. And he's a really, really good kid by all accounts. Jackson Ross on to punt here to Boo Carter, the freshman. Dustin, you and I took in practice yesterday morning in the indoor facility because I'm amazed, by the way, that Josh Dobbs got out and played golf yesterday. It was it was raining sideways in Knoxville yesterday, but watching Jackson Ross punt, which he can do with both feet, by the way, I'm surprised that there aren't a few holes in the ceiling of the indoor facility with how much velocity he gets on the ball. That one goes for 47 yards. Yeah, and it didn't matter which leg. What a challenge that is for the opposing team's punt returner. You know, when you're a punt returner, you're sitting back there, you know exactly how that ball is going to come off of a right leg kicker or a left leg kicker. And this guy can get sit back there like he's Jose Ramirez in the box and bat switch hand or <laughs> be a switch hitter, I should say. So 14-14, orange and white, 9-30 and counting here in the third. As Jake Merklinger, who ran for about a 25-yard touchdown in the first, gets the ball here, first and 10, back at the 13-yard line after the punt from Jackson Ross. Still got some of the starters in here. Brazel's in the slot right in front of me. Play action, first down. And that's Dante Thornton coming back after the ankle injury. Gain of 14. That injury against Missouri in Thornton. November. And they said that when he got hurt, fortunately, by the time that they came back for the second semester in January, he was just about ready to go. Now the second year since he transferred over from Oregon, where he spent two seasons with the Ducks. Dustin, he's going to be a crucial part of the offense in 2024. Yeah, and he was disappointed with last season, how, how things had gone for him in terms of his production. The injuries were a concern. And, and listen, a, a player like, with his talent, he, he could have transferred again ha, if he wanted to. Instead, he comes back to Tennessee with a lot to prove. And, and now when you add another receiver like Brazel on the other side, I, I like what they're doing. And again, keeping these guys in through the third quarter is, is interesting to see. I, I really do believe they want to see the chemistry they can build with this offense and those guys being on the field at the same time. This is third down and eight. Flag is thrown at the snap. Deep ball downfield, a couple of strides clear. It's Brazel to the 10, the five, and that's a touchdown. And you're gonna have a flag. Outside on the defense, that penalty is declined. Results to play is a touchdown. He beats Jalen McMurray right off the line of scrimmage, and I'm not so sure exactly who it was on. Did he announce a number, Mike? Because I think McMurray might have been offsides in his defense. A Brazel on the outside. A McMurray, the cornerback transfer in from Temple. That's another crucial part is getting experience in that secondary. He played almost 1,500 snaps for the Owls and comes here with two years to play. So when they went into the transfer portal, they brought in Jalen McMurray at corner, Jacoby Thomas, who was a starter at safety at Middle Tennessee State, and Jermod McCoy at the other cornerback spot. Having guys who are ready in big game experience was a big part of what they were looking for. And the other thing McMurray brings to the table is his versatility. You know, he was able to play a little bit inside at that star position and then also outside. Two completely different positions. A lot of people think when you play corner, playing inside versus outside is very similar. No, it's not. It's, it's much different. And to be able to have that versatility to do that, they always say the more you, the more you can do, McMurray can do a lot, but I'll tell you who can do more. How about Chris Brazel taking this one to the house?
Heading into year four of the Josh Heupel era, last year injuries were certainly part of the story. One of those was an injury to wide receiver Brew McCoy, who was lost for the year in October, a season ending lower body injury. And so as he gets healthy, ready to return for the 2024 season, He's certainly going to have a lot of insight, a lot of experience joining Squirrel White out there, Dante Thornton and Chris Brazel. And Brew McCoy is down on the sideline with Dustin Fox as we get ready to get back to action here. 4.41 to go in the third. Let's go down to Dustin. Hey, Mike, we got one of the best wide receivers for the Volunteers here, battling back from an injury. Brew McCoy, how we doing, man? Doing great, man. Enjoying it. How's the rehab process been for you? Yeah, it's, it's Every day it's tedious, but it's great. It's fun. You know, I enjoy it. You know, let's go back to last year. You know, obviously the injury is really frustrating. It happens in the middle of the year. You're off to a good start. How tough was that to have to watch your guys throughout the rest of the season knowing had you been out there, you'd be able to help the guys? It was tough. I mean, it was tough at first. And then you realize, like, you know, this is what you as a leader have to do to push them. This is why you were pushing them. So that you go down, you can't be there, you can't be out on the field. Like, you've pushed them enough in the offseason that they can go out and handle business. So where are you at mentally in terms of what – you have left to prove what you want to show volunteer nation here this season I think that I mean what I want to show Vol nation is just that the amount of work we put in we deserve to go have the success and that's collective that's fans players coaches everybody like the success is imminent and the work's been put in and then just me personally I got a lot to prove to myself just like an injury like this you want to come out and show yourself hey I'm, I'm not only the same player but I'm better and I can still improve and push the needle on myself so I um, mean there's a lot to prove and there's a lot to go out and do and that's why I push myself the way I do every day. There's no doubt people are excited about the wide receiver group they're really excited about your quarterback Nico uh, what have you seen out of him and uh, you're smiling man you're excited about Nico talk talk to me about, about your young quarterback man I mean he's, he's like a receiver's dream you know he's an accurate passer he can extend plays he's great on his feet and he's smart and um, he's a ball player so when you're looking at like what you got in front of you there's not a better quarterback and then he's just a great dude and a great teammate and so let's go to that wide receiver room because that you guys are going to help Nico a, a freshman quarter, or quarterback needs weapons on the outside. You guys have a ton. And then when you get back healthy, it's going to be phenomenal. I'm, I'm assuming uh, how close are you guys in that room? You got you guys got a bunch of dudes. I'm, I'm guessing you guys have a little bit of fun in the quarterback or the wide receiver room. Man, we do. I mean, it's like a brotherhood. Like th those are my brothers. That's my family. Uh, we lean on each other for everything. Um, and, and, and it goes off the field, too. Like we really look out for each other. And I think that that helps with. All, us all wanting to have like success you know nobody's really it's competition but we want to see us all win you know what have you seen out of, out of the young uh, freshman receiver Matthews a lot of maturity man like he's supposed to be in high school he's acting like a third fourth year guy I mean he carries himself well he shows up every day he, had, he doesn't miss stuff um, and he's really like picked up everything super quick I couldn't even do it that quick when I came in early so I commend him for all of that we got a chance to watch the video of all, all the kids that sent you those cards I, I, that was pretty cool man no doubt. Yeah, yeah. I mean, shout out South Knoxville for real. Like that elementary school, all the teachers, everybody, the staff. It was cool to meet them. And I, I mean, and you, you got to see how cool that was. We appreciate the time and best of luck to you. Appreciate you. Here is Bruno McCoy. Back to you, Mike. All right. Flag is down on a deep ball into double coverage down the far sideline. And the ball is caught, but unfortunately out of bounds there for Trey Weary on the deep throw with a flag Outside down at the 41. On the defense, number 98. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay third down. Hey, Dustin, what is that learning curve? If you go back to your freshman year at Ohio State of just being able to grasp all of the things, not just the playbook, but what your life is like now. Like you said, you're supposed to be in high school and has the maturity of a guy who's a junior or a senior. Goodness, Mike, I, I can't even imagine, you know, what it's like. For me, I, I was just swimming, you know, trying to learn the defense, trying to learn, you know, where you got to go to class, where I got to go to eat I mean you think about those little things just being a freshman in college and on top of that you you tack on the responsibilities of being a player and I can't imagine being a quarterback having to learn an offense and all these things so it's it's certainly a challenge and you know now with guys coming in a little bit early I, I do think that sort of helps them because you, you can get established a little bit earlier on but but nonetheless it's like being a rookie all over again in the NFL it's almost the exact same thing you just really just trying to find your way and that's such a difference maker, too, for guys like Mike Matthews, who arrive here early, Boo Carter on the defensive side, to be able to have that leg up with these spring practices under your belt by the time that preseason camp rolls around, you're just about ready to go. That was Ryan Dameron at quarterback there. Defense sent heavy pressure, so 
The redshirt freshman walk-on's pass goes incomplete to bring up fourth down and four. Dameron, who chose the Vols over offers from East Tennessee, Eastern Kentucky, and Jackson Ross with a punt down to the 10 for Jermad McCoy, 47 yards. They said today if you had to put together a starting two deep, that McCoy at corner there would be a starter. First year guy from Oregon State, native of Texas, three years to play. And there's going to be chaos every offseason. Jonathan Smith has a phenomenal season the for the end Beavers. Of the third quarter. Leaves Oregon State and their conference changing as well. They feel like there's so much untapped potential for Jermad McCoy at corner. And McCoy is is been really kind of fun to watch here throughout this game. I, I like the two young transfers. I guess they're not that young. But uh, you, you look at McMurray, the transfer from Temple, McCoy from Oregon State. I, I think they've got a bright future here in the secondary. So what a gorgeous day here in Knoxville. One quarter to go for the orange and white spring game. We go to the fourth on a gorgeous afternoon on Rocky Top. Post game concert to follow here after folks file out of Neyland and then I know at least one guy in this building is heading over to the baseball stadium as well, Dustin Fox, for a continuation of a big series against LSU. I hear L SEC baseball is where it's at, buddy. So you've never been? I have not. And oh, I, you don't even know what you're missing. And, and we got a top 25 matchup this afternoon. What a day here on Rocky Top. You got the spring game, you got fans everywhere. You talk about these concerts, there's fans outside having a block party, a watch party for Mike Cousins. They all want to see you. And then you got the baseball game. I can't wait. Baseball and softball both are ranked top five in the country. You had Rick Barnes basketball team doing the fall walk earlier today after they had a phenomenal season. Took a deep run. SEC regular season champions outright for the first time since 07 08 and reached the Elite Eight for just the second time ever. And you've got the excitement of a new women's basketball coach coming in, a young, fresh face. So lots of things to be happy about. I had, by the way, I had, Tennessee the, I had the volunteers in my bracket winning it all. Easy for you to say now. There's no way for us to fact check that. <laughs> Go on ESPN. I got, my, I got my bracket. I'll show you how bad I was. You were all in on Dalton Connect. Man. I think I just got past, past Purdue. This was the year you were going to have the perfect bracket, right? It was close. <laughs> Gaston Moore a little bit high on the slant to the outside. Third down and five. Defense drops seven. That's a first down throw, a catch, a run, a little bit of nifty move in there from Dayton Sneed, who's had a pretty good day on the outside. Yeah, Sneed's a, a very interesting prospect here for, for these guys. I mean, only had one catch last season. But so far in this game, he's made a couple of catches and a lot of yak, yards after catch, making guys miss. You love seeing that. Yeah, 20 yards there on the catch and run. And a handoff nets five yards to Khalifa Keith, who's hoping to play a bigger role this year as well. The sophomore out of Birmingham, Alabama, last year was mostly a special teamer and 11 carries for 24 yards a season ago. Long throw to the numbers, one missed tackle, make it two and a third is what it takes to bring down Caleb Webb. That's 13 more yards. And after a slow start first quarter offensively, things have really picked up. Tennessee quarterbacks overall have produced 3,000 yards of total offense now three straight years. That's every year of the Josh Heupel era. You go back, Dustin, in the history of this program, 1950 up until 2020, the year before Heifel arrived. That play is blown dead. Tennessee had a quarterback produce 3,000 yards of total offense five times in 70 years, and it's happened now in three straight seasons. Well, and obviously a big reason for that is, is Josh Heifel and the explosive offense that he brings. And on top of that, you have to talk about recruiting and being able to get these players in, whether it be through the portal or through the traditional, you know, high school route. And 
I think when you're a quarterback coming out, you look at offenses and you say, where do I fit? And if, if you want to, you know, run and gun and, and have the ability to run a little bit too and you're mobile, this is the perfect fit for a guy like, like Nico and, you know, Joe Milton a season ago and Hendon Hooker before that. In Heupel's three seasons, the Vols have averaged 483 yards a game. That's fourth in the country and ranked third in scoring at 39 points a game, only behind Ohio State and Georgia. And I love this one because it's fun to watch. They've taken a snap once every 20.8 seconds. Fastest pace in FBS. Do you have a stopwatch up there? I got a phone. <laughs> <laughs> and he's Josh Heupel is one of just three Tennessee coaches to take the program to bowl games in each of his first three seasons. All right, what's your call on third and 18 here? Do you want what I would do if I were playing Madden or what I expect? Because what I'm, I expect is a draw. I know what you do on Madden. <laughs> Chuck it. And instead, it ends up with a sack, which, of course, quarterbacks can't be taken down in this game. But talk about what Tim Banks has done in his three seasons as defensive coordinator. 297 tackles for loss, most in the SEC, and 41 sacks last year, Dustin, most since a school record 50 back in the year 2000. I think he's done a really good job with his, with his defense. And, you know, being able to recruit some of these top players for that defensive front certainly helps. I think it's going to be interesting how, how he's able to, to, to mesh that group in the back end because that's, that's really the most important part of this particular team team in this team defense and remember coach Banks is a, is a former defensive back himself by trade so he spends a lot of time in that room and so he'll have his hands all over the defensive backs in the secondary as they try to improve. Athletics this coming season is going to look drastically different. The additions of Oklahoma and Texas to the SEC, Oregon, UCLA, USC, and Washington. Maybe they'll come to know the great joys of a layover at O'Hare Airport as they make their way over to the Midwest. Arizona, ASU, Colorado, and Utah to the Big 12. And the Atlantic Coast Conference, like well, you could call it the All Coast Conference, with Cal and Stanford joining and SMU giving it a presence in the middle of the country. So a bigger SEC, and for the Vols as they head into 2024, a really cool schedule. The opener against Chattanooga, week two, taking on NC State for the first time since 2012. That was a win in Atlanta that year, and only the second trip ever to North Carolina in the last 60 seasons. They'll play that game in Charlotte. Dustin, I think what's really cool about this schedule, though, is from October 12th to November 9th, you've got four games plus a bye week in there. It's going to be four straight home games, all against SEC opponents. And the last time that happened was Tulane in the SEC in 1947. And they left the league in 66. Well, that's certainly going to help them because there's no doubt in college football what a what a huge home field advantage there is. But to start the season, I mean, it, it, a bit of a bugaboo. You know, you got to go on the road to NC State at Oklahoma at Arkansas. I mean, it's going to be tough to start it. But if you can somehow get through that little bit of a gauntlet to, to start the year, you're going to have a chance. Go out on a make, and they did with Max Gilbert drilling the field goal to finish off the 2024 Orange and White game here in Knoxville. Well, Dustin, what we saw today from Nico Iamaleava was impressive. There's lots of reason for optimism based off of not only what we've seen here today, but guys who are returning from injury, sitting out today for whatever the reason might have been to build a really strong contender in the SEC, which is going to be, as we just talked about moments ago, an even more difficult conference to win in this year. Yeah, listen, the one thing that stands out to me is speed. I think they got speed on both sides of the football, and that's going to help them in this conference. There's no doubt about that. I was impressed with the quarterback play. We talked a ton about Nico as we, we, we went through the broadcast, but uh, I thought I was really impressed with the wide receivers, especially Brazel. <clears throat> excuse me, the transfer from, from Tulane was uh, really impressive. And then, then Matthews, you, the young freshman, showed showed a lot as well. Uh, I, th I think good things ahead. I'm not, I'm not saying they're, they're def definitely going to be in the playoff, but they've got enough talent to certainly be in that mix. You know, multiple recruiting classes in for Josh Heupel. The culture is in place. The depth 
as good or better than it's ever been. The defense built around a really strong defensive line, experience brought in in the secondary, and talk about a strong culture. Guys who choose to come back and use their sixth year, Cooper Mays, Javante Spragans, Brew McCoy, who we heard from during the broadcast. This is a team that is all running the same race together. So now it's time to watch and wait until the start of preseason camp and then the opener and a challenging SEC schedule for the Tennessee Volunteers. But a high scoring, exciting, fast paced offense, fun to watch here this afternoon in Neyland Stadium. Thanks to everybody who joined us here today, whether it was some VFLs like Josh Dobbs, Brew McCoy, Nico Ia Amelava. And for Dustin Fox down on the field, our statistician up here in the booth, Kirk McCarley, our spotter, John Tobias, and our producer, Stas Hall. I'm Mike Cousins saying thanks so much for watching and so long from Knoxville. Great home games all against SEC opponents and the last time that happened was Tulane in the SEC in 1947 and they left the league in 66. Well that's certainly going to help them because there's no doubt in college football what a what a huge home field advantage there is but to start the season I mean it, it, a bit of a bugaboo you, know, you got to go on the road to NC State at Oklahoma at Arkansas I mean it's going to be tough to start it but if you can somehow get through that little bit of a gauntlet to, to start the year you're going to have a chance and you know no one knows what Florida is going to be Alabama is going to be but those games are at home in the middle of October and that could be a, a really opportune time for the volunteers to make a step and, and put themselves on the map as national contenders for the playoffs and maybe even a national title this year. And that game against Oklahoma is going to be highly anticipated as well for Josh Heupel, his alma mater week four, first meeting between the Sooners and the Volunteers since 2015. Got a minute 21 on the timer here. And Navy Schuler at the controls, hands it off, third down and 10 to Hunter Barnes, the redshirt sophomore out of Memphis. Couple of injured running backs today, Cam Selden, Ping Lewis, a signee coming in early. And so we did not get to see them today. Dylan Sampson at the top of that depth chart today. No squirrel white in action along with Drew McCoy who's injured. Ethan Davis at tight end. Not available for action today. And an incomplete pass there on fourth down and nine. So we'll see another unit come on here for the final minute of offense. Among other guys we did not get to see today, especially along the offensive line, the center Cooper Mays, Andre Carrick, Javante Spragans, Jackson Lampley. And on the defensive side, Elijah Herring, who's been out all spring, the linebacker, and Keenan Peely, who's their most veteran player, going into his seventh year, a precautionary sit it's out awesome. as well. So pressure timing here, Josh Turbyville for a straight on field goal try. A 45 yard attempt to close it out. And when you're ready, Mike, we've got a special guest down here. Take it away, D Fox. How about we're joined by the starting quarterback of the Volunteers, the new starting quarterback of the Volunteers, Nico? How are we doing, buddy? Doing great, man. How are you? Oh, not as good as you. You look great out there today on some of those deep throws. How are you feeling? Feeling great, man. You know, got an opportunity to go out there and get better with my teammates and, you know, just showcase our talent in this spring game. And I thought we did a good job today. How important was this spring? You obviously you start the bowl game, but now you come into this season as a starting quarterback. You know it's your job. Uh, what'd you learn? How'd you progress? Learned a lot, man. You know, I think that bowl game helped me out a lot tremendously. Just you know, being a full starter for a full game, and uh, yeah, you know, I carried that over to this uh, off season, this spring, and um, yeah, really just improving with, with my teammates. We've got a couple new guys from the portal, so you know, just getting them up to par with you know our offense and our tempo. Is it tough being a young guy to, to step up and be a leader when you're you're just I mean you're just a freshman. Yeah um, 
I want to say it's tough. I know, I know expected, you know, as a quarterback coming in, you've got to lead these guys, got to lead your teammates. And like I said last year, just learning from Joe on, you know, how to lead guys and be a pro and leading the team has helped me out. So, you know, I look forward to carrying that over this year. And last thing, just talk about those wide receivers. You got some big dudes out there who can run and catch. Man, we got a lot of guys that can go out there in that receiver room. Um, I just look forward to, you know, seeing them make big plays, man. They, they made a couple big plays today, and, uh, yeah, we can only get better from here. All right, we're excited to watch you, man. Best of luck to you. Appreciate you, brother. Yes, sir. There he is, the quarterback of your volunteers, Mike. And I think I needed a ladder to, to talk to him. 6'6". <laughs> six, six. Great height, and we had three kickers go out to close things out. Pressure situation, 45 yards, three seconds on the clock, and it's a three-man place kicking competition trying to replace Charles Campbell this year. Josh Turbyville did not connect. Neither did J.T. Carver, and just like an anger game, you got to go out on a make, and they did with Max Gilbert drilling the field goal to finish off the 2024 orange and white game here in Knoxville. Well, Dustin, what we saw today from Nico Iamaleava was impressive. There's lots of reason for optimism based off of not only what we've seen here today, but guys who are returning from injury, sitting out today for whatever the reason might have been to build a really strong contender in the SEC, which is going to be, as we just talked about moments ago, an even more difficult conference to win in this year. Yeah, listen, the one thing that stands out to me is speed. I think they got speed on both sides of the football, and that's going to help them in this conference. There's no doubt about that. I was impressed with the quarterback play. We talked a ton about Nico as we, we, we went through the broadcast, but uh, I thought I was really impressed with the wide receivers, especially Brazel. <clears throat> excuse me, the transfer from, from Tulane was uh, really impressive. And then, then Matthews, you, the young freshman, showed showed a lot as well. Uh, I, th I think good things ahead. I'm not, I'm not saying they're, they're nef definitely going to be in the playoff, but they've got enough talent to certainly be in that mix. You know, multiple recruiting classes in for Josh Heupel. The culture is in place. The depth as good or better than it's ever been. The defense built around a really strong defensive line. Experience brought in in the secondary. And talk about a strong culture. Guys who choose to come back and use their sixth year. Cooper Mays, Javante Spragans, Brew McCoy, who we heard from during the broadcast. This is a team that is all running the same race together. So now it's time to watch and wait until the start of preseason camp and then the opener and a challenging SEC schedule for the Tennessee Volunteers. But a high scoring, exciting, fast paced offense, fun to watch here this afternoon in Neyland Stadium. Thanks to everybody who joined us here today, whether it was some VFLs like Josh Dobbs, Brew McCoy, Nico Ia Amelava. And for Dustin Fox down on the field, our statistician up here in the booth, Kirk McCarley, our spotter, John Tobias, and our producer, Stas Hall. I'm Mike Cousins saying thanks so much for watching and so long from Knoxville.